Hello, hello! My name is Callista, and welcome back to When the Night Comes. In the last episode, Camille, with the aid of Finn, finally realised why the creature was able to thrall her so badly when she first met it. It has clearly been fed the blood of Fiero, a powerful vampire with empath abilities. So what does this mean? What is this creature? Well, Camille has an idea. Something new. Something powerful. Ask about the rumours. Yes, Finn had said he had heard rumours about how hunters were created. And it seems that Camille... Camille actually can't remember why she is the way she is. Because you've got to admit, hunters... They don't just seem like strong humans. They have these very powerful empath abilities. So clearly something has been done to them. The rumours you've heard about the initiation. Can you tell me? He grips the edge of his desk, the wood creaking beneath his fingertips. There are many things about the agency's practices that I've heard over the centuries. None of them are particularly kind, but most sound too far-fetched to be plausible. My personal favourite is that hunters grow on trees. Were you grown on a tree? Uh, no. No, I, I don't think that Camille is a plant person. I laugh, rolling my eyes. Point taken. Not all of them are exactly sane rumours, then. No, but with everything that's been going on around here lately, stranger things have happened. I process everything as best as I can on such little sleep, yet again feeling out of my depth, but somehow closer to the truth. Our priority is getting Fierro out of there, but we also have other concerns to attend to, too. I can have the clan work on an extraction plan. Now we know exactly where he is. Leave that to us. At least that's one less thing for you to worry about, right? Though I could use your help enlisting Merriman to assist. We could do with someone on your side. Consider it done. You'll let me know if you need me too, though. He nods, reaching for the door to open it for me. Of course. Now, stay safe, won't you? Also, again for posterity. I will. Just need to see Ezra about our little demon friends. Well, have fun with that, Camille. And good luck. The shop is busy when I arrive, but Ezra does an excellent job of remaining professional when he spots me. I linger in the corner while he rings up his final customers, surveying the volumes upon volumes of magical literature he has on display. The sleepy white cat from before is curled up on the countertop, and she lazily raises her head when I approach as the bell signals that the final customer has left. Her eyes glow a vivid aquamarine, and she's certainly unlike any feline I've ever seen before. Her name is Coco. Aw, Coco. That's a cute name for a cat. He scratches her chin and she purrs her thanks before gracefully jumping down, heading for the back room with a swish of her tail. She's got a bit of an attitude problem. I think I've spoiled her a little too much. How long have you had her? His mouth twists to the side while he thinks. She followed me home one night when I was a child, maybe 10, 11 years ago? She's not exactly a normal cat, but I've never really bothered to find out what she might be or where she's from. She's just Coco. We value her privacy. What can I do for you? Is it about the tall, blonde, utterly terrifying woman you sent my way last night? Maybe. I grimace taking a deep breath, 
My mind is once again overflowing with revelations, new information I've barely had time to process. Sorry about that, but no, I had a chat with our demon friends. I study his expression carefully, but I see nothing to indicate he has any idea what I'm about to say. And? How adept are you at closing hell portals? What a question, Camille. What a question. Don't even ease him in. Just like, boom, hell portal straight away. I, what? The appropriate response, I feel. I almost can't help but laugh at the way his eyes widen. Then a flicker of realisation, his shoulders sinking under the weight of it. Oh no, I can't believe I didn't think to check. I've been so caught up with everything else that I just... Fuck. Fuck indeed, my friend. Fuck indeed. Uh, I believe in you, we have no choice. I again, you catch more flies with honey than with vinegar. Like, there's there's no reason to be like, well, we have no choice. Things are so dark. Like, no, let's look on the bright side. You can do it, Ezra. You're very powerful. He's obviously distressed that such a thing could fly under his radar. And I gather that Ezra has quickly put the puzzle pieces together. Ezra isn't stupid. He knows what this means. What the tear between realms has brought upon this town. We can and will fix this. There must be a spell, a ritual. He clears his throat, snapping himself from his daze. Yes, I mean, there will be, not that I'm familiar. It will require a great deal of research, and I doubt I'll be able to do that alone. Well, lucky for you, you and August have made up. I'm sure they'd be willing to help you out. August? He smiles. August is very powerful, as I'm sure you can already tell. So, with their help, hopefully it's something we can achieve. I don't doubt either of you for a second. I look at him as he processes all of this. His fingers visibly twitching at his side, eyes flicking to the endless rows of books that line his walls. Ezra, I know you can do this. Please, don't worry. He offers me a smile, but it's a sorry thing. Timid, almost. I'm glad that you have some faith in me, at least. I'm just so angry with myself. I was the first person Omen found when he arrived. I should have known. How were you to have known? How? Like, he could have gotten through anyway. There, was, there wasn't really anything to indicate that he effectively just like busted down the door in between realms like i i don't think ezra's to blame for this ezra just saw a man with a scarred up back and thought like oh i should help him he wasn't like i don't think there was any reason why you should thought like oh a man with a scarred up back did you kick down the door between realms like no ezra like, he helped him and then things went to shit. Like, things kept piling up onto his plate. You know, he's been really busy. He's the town witch. Like, I, I don't think it's his fault that he didn't think of this sooner. I tended to his wounds, saw the markings. I should have checked. Markings? I think back to the odd way that Omen rubbed his neck. Demons from other realms often have a sigil or rune that grants them access to their home, so it would make sense for him to have one, I suppose. But healed? To what extent did Omen go to? Again, we know what extent he went to because of the Codex entry we read. Admittedly, Camille doesn't know that, but we, we the audience do. I... you should ask, Omen. It isn't my place. Of course, but I think you can give yourself a pass on this one. 
It isn't exactly common to have a prince of hell stumble into your shop, is it? It takes him a moment, but a small smile crosses his lips. I appreciate the faith you show in me. I'll try my best. Anything to keep the town safe. boy. Now, do you want to tell August or shall I? Please, let us do it. Let us. Go, Camille. Don't wait for the answer. Just run. <laughs> the very loud burst of laughter tells me I might be the one tasked with such a pleasant conversation. Excellent. Why are you being so sarcastic? August is lovely. I was expecting to go straight to August's office and it was like, this, this isn't their office, what? Piper opens the door with a smile as I advance to the next stop on my tour. Afternoon? Just gonna stand there or what? I roll my eyes, kicking off my boots as I enter. We take a seat upon the sofa, Piper tucking her feet beneath her, relaxed in her surroundings. I had an eventful evening. She sits a little straighter, eyebrow quirked in interest. Oh yeah? Yes, with your favourite cultist, actually. <sighs> the noise that she makes is interesting. Ugh. Uh, how awful for you, my sympathies. Rather you than me, though, I suppose. What gives? Oh, you know, the usual. Just her making friends with a thing terrorising us. Normal cultist stuff. And again. I'm gonna grab this for posterity, because why not? I wish I could say that I'm surprised. Was it at least a productive conversation? Yes, it helped, which is better than nothing, right? Better than nothing. I take a deep breath, considering my next words carefully. We should talk about Aya, about what we found down there. Her shoulders slump and she averts her gaze, her eyes sad. Yeah, I haven't stopped thinking about it all. Fiero, Aya, everything. How can we work for people who do that? Who forge records, who imprison their own for nothing? Uh, I... I don't think we can. Which is why we need to revolt. <laughs> we need... we need to protest. We need to do something. Aya is innocent, that much I know. And Azazel? He's down there because he supposedly got attacked? It continues to make no fucking sense. I agree with her, but we have little time for frustration. We have to begin acting. Now. The clan are preparing to get Fierro out of the dungeons. We can't leave him in there. Not now we know what they're doing. Finn was wondering if you'd mind assisting them. Of course I will. Anything to stick it to those asshole enforcers. No, no. We we need to be honest. We need to be honest about everything. It does not behoove us to... You know, we can't rally against the enforcers for keeping secrets and then turn around and keep secrets. It'd make us a hypocrite. I feel a little stupid for having such an idea, but after what Finn told me about the blood, I can't get it off my mind. When I encountered the creature, it was almost as if it had thralled me, like it sapped away all of my free will. Piper frowns, shifting a little closer, waiting for me to continue. What if... What if they're taking Fierro's blood to give to this creature? To make it stronger, better? She takes a while to respond. If they are, why? 
Why would they need to mess around with the things we're supposed to be killing? Our purpose is to rid the planet of those things, not to make them stronger. I, again. Why would they need to mess around with the things we're supposed to be killing? Because that's, that's what they did to us. I'm, I am convinced the hunters, the only reason they are hunters is because they, they drank something, probably blood, that made them into what they are. And what they're doing with the creature, it's just like a souped up version of whatever they went through. Like, they fought monsters with monsters, and then when those monsters weren't good enough, they decided to make mecha monsters, effectively. She's right. It makes no sense. It makes perfect sense. We need to figure out their endgame, and fast. I pause, watching her carefully. She looks so tired. How are you doing, after all of this? She huffs a quiet little laugh, shrugging. I don't really know. Before all of this, I was just angry. Angry that I got punished for caring too much, which isn't something I ever really did before. Now I just feel numb. It's going to be okay, Piper. C Camille. Camille, don't make promises you can't keep. You don't know that it's going to be okay. It has to be. Right. How could it possibly get any fucking worse? I grimace and Piper laughs. <laughs> don't say that. Now we're really fucked. With a groan, I reluctantly tear myself from the comfort of her sofa. The mere thought of dragging myself across the street to the wolf makes me want to weep, but... I really should check in with August. Why is August at the wolf? Is August day drinking? Please don't. Please don't, August. We need you at your best. I need to go and visit our dear enforcer. Piper waggles her eyebrows suggestively, and I realise I've made a terrible mistake. Piper. I truly can't believe you. I mean, I can. August is gorgeous. But the fact that you got them to remove that stick that they had firmly lodged up their arse? A miracle. Piper paints a vivid picture. They're not that bad. <laughs> she snorts you have to say that you're the one getting all cosy with them I head for the door leaving her snickering on the sofa goodbye Piper don't do anything I wouldn't do Piper Piper I'd okay <laughs> Piper you crazy in the aftermath of what we learned, August and Ezra were quick to action, gathering supplies and the instruments required to perform the spell. That was the first day. Then time stretched on. Okay! I was saying this earlier, I don't think the game has done a particularly good job of establishing time. Like I said, I... It really felt like we had maybe been in Lunaris for, like, a week. However, it's very clear that Camille has been here for, like, maybe, like, a month and a bit, somewhere around there. But that, they never really established that, so it's, it's good to see that they're doing it now. Then, time stretched on. One day. Two days. Four. A week. Knowing that everything was leading up to this moment and that it might not even work was stressful to say the least. What if they couldn't close it? What if the creature is still that strong without this unseen force feeding it? Those worries lingered, 
but I found ways to distract myself. I hunted nightly. I spent time training with August. I saw August at the end and decided to switch the names. Let's try that again. I hunted nightly. I spent time training with Piper, studying with August. There was also private time spent with August. Hey, nice one, Camille. Stolen minutes with them amongst all the chaos. Fleeting moments that only solidified my feelings for them. Then, a knock at my door one night. The news I'd been waiting for. I step outside just in time to watch the sun set over the horizon. The sky darkens and the clouds are tipped with orange, then purple, until all that hangs over me is endless black. Somehow, I feel lighter than ever as I head for the forest, a funny kind of hope settling in my gut. Ezra and August are strong alone, but together... I think back to that moment in Ezra's shop, the reconciliation between the two, the shift in how they hold themselves, a weight finally released. Together, I have no doubt that they're unstoppable. There's only one way to find out. Omen and Elaine had entered our realm right on the edge of town just as the cobblestones fade into dirt. The trees are denser here, everything a little less ominous. I find Ezra and August exactly where they said they would be, both of them looking a little pensive. Oh, August! August, you have battle armor, okay! Oh, they do look fine. They look so fancy. I find Ezra and August exactly where they said what they would be, both of them looking a little pensive. Camille, right on time. I know you don't suffer tardiness. Very good. Now, shall we just get on with it, I suppose? Ezra has already laid out his supplies, a neat little pile of strange things you could only ever find in a magic shop. There's also a symbol drawn on the forest floor that looks startlingly similar to a pentagram with a few minor changes. Ezra catches me looking and offers me a shrug as if saying, of course us closing a portal to one of the many hells would require such a thing. Just another day in Lunaris. Let's just get this over with. He pulls a vial from his belt the liquid dark and viscous. From my experience, I recognize it as demon blood. Uh, Omen gave it willingly. I didn't stab him or anything. I think we know that, Ezra. Just checking. He pours the blood upon the ground at their feet, the faintest shimmer shining in the grass where it makes contact. They join hands and begin chanting. No! <laughs> Why do you do this to me? I can't read this! And I've got to do it in August voice. August, there we go. Manaz Mina Ayamayoni. That was shit. Thank you, thank you for the English. From the fire of Earth. No, stop it! <laughs> K Mina Aim Saz to the fire of hell. Oh shit! I t August I didn't see their face. Oh my goodness. Well this looks cool. Okay. The shimmer grows in luminosity. It pulses brighter, brighter still, until it's almost blinding. I step back, watching as their grip on one another tightens, their eyes aglow, legs shaking. Ezra almost falters, but August holds him steady, gives him strength. K 
Okay, Sase Nuchisas. We call to he who rules this realm. Yeza yiz kokwa. Close this gate. The ground beneath our feet rumbles. It stutters and shakes from their incantation. A vibration I feel deep in my bones. Ye has a yiz kokwa. Close this gate. Then, stillness, silence. Slowly they release one another, exchanging appraising glances at their current state. There is some haggard breathing, but they're apparently fine. They turn their attention back to the tear. Or former tear. Is it done? Did it work? Perhaps the question was too soon. It tumbles out before I can stop it, and it echoes loudly. Yet, if seeing that hazy portal wink out was anything to go by, I damn well better ask. I think it did. The energy still lingers, but I no longer feel anything pulling at me. Not like I did when we first arrived. That was way too easy. That was too easy. I do not trust this. The only way to know for sure is to get Omen or Elaine to check for us. Uh, I can't... Of course! Of course! Ezra is interrupted by a chorus of yelling and terrible screaming. As if all at once, the air is kicked from our lungs, and whatever brief moment of relief we had is extinguished at the sound. It's coming from town, but we need to- We need to run. I'll clean up here. Go, I've got this. Oh god. We both look at him, hesitant, but time is of the essence and we know we have no choice. Stay safe. Head straight home as soon as you're done. You've exhausted yourself enough for one evening. I will. And this is where I'm going to bring today's episode to a close. Yeah, this this isn't typically how I end an episode. However, this has been this has been a rather odd recording session, so I'm kind of having to work around that. My apologies. Now then, what is going on in town? Well, you'll have to find out in the next episode. So, until then, please remember to like if you enjoyed, leave a comment below. And if you wanted to subscribe, it would be very much appreciated. I've been Callista. Thanks for watching and see you in the next episode.